And you and, and, you and believe those people in Atlanta, Israel don't fit that's none an of them curses. Emotion, what you they don't said. fit none I of them curses. I respect what you said, there. but it's a fallacy. It's a logical fallacy. Those people in Atlanta, Israel, emotion doesn't prove those the veracity people in Atlanta, of the case. Israel don't fit none of them curses. I'm not talking about and, that. And, and, no, I'm no, saying we deal with what, what you have done. Darren, you the second chapter tells us the outline of the kingdoms that will happen before the Lord sets up His kingdom of heaven. It's another fourteen. It's the heathen that's the test you guys have to take to get into. So the heathens are reigning right now because the Lord has not set up His kingdom. So what heathen is reigning right now, Vocab? If the, if the kingdom is not set up according well, to Daniel the second chapter, Nebuchadnezzar's dream, what heathen is reigning heathen right now? The heathen you have reigning over you is Tahar. Be specific. That's the heathen reigning yes. over you. On that note, we go. And I love him, but he's a heathen reigning note, over you because you think on he's an note, apostle and an elder. Gotta, Check this out. We had the Babylonians, we had the Medo Persians, we yes. had the Greeks, we had Perfect. the Romans. Now we have the European Now you Union. believe that now in we all those Europe. captivities, Israel is going to slavery. Shalom, brothers and sisters out there. All uh, praise to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rikakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. All right, and this lesson is regarding uh, Vocab Malone <clears throat> and the question that was asked in him by the brothers in Virginia. Now, you all seen the video, you know, by now you've seen the footage of Vocab Malone going up to the brothers in Virginia, GMS Virginia, and uh, asking them questions, but they, they posed the question to Vocab Malone that he would not answer, and we know that he, he could not answer it, and he would not answer it, all right? And the question was, in Daniel 2, what heathen nation is currently in rulership right now? So we're gonna go through a quick lesson to show you, and it's followed by a powerful video. Stay tuned, make sure you watch the video. It's going around among the brotherhood, but it answers the question that Vocab Malone wouldn't answer. And Vocab Malone, if you're out there, when you come up to us, we're gonna pose you with hard questions pertaining and the prophecy that we know you can't answer. And if you do answer, you're going to trap yourself. You're going to show that you know that you're Edomites. And the answer to the question is the Roman Empire is currently in rulership before the kingdom of heaven comes because the Lord is not here. So if the Lord was here, then we would be in the kingdom. So we know that we're not in the kingdom. So right now we're in the Roman, the rulership of the Roman Empire and the Romans are Edomites. So stay tuned for the rest of the video and for the uh, powerful video at the end. See you soon, Lord willing. Shalom. All right, so as promised, this is another part of the video. All right, I want to say Shalom, all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And you can see it, this lesson is entitled Vocab Malone, What Heathen Nation is Currently in Rulership, pursuant to Daniel chapter 2. Now, if you're saying you're a Bible teacher, you're supposed, you're supposed to be able to, excuse me, answer questions. Now, the brothers in Virginia, they asked you this question when you rolled up on, on them and the brother asked you straight up, face to face. And you turned right around and said, the heathen that's ruling over us is Apostle Tahar, which occurring, according to the scriptures is incorrect, okay? <laughs> it's incorrect. And we know you was trying to be funny, but you didn't want to answer the question, all right? The brother is asking you right here, what heathen nation is currently in rulership? And we're gonna have to answer the question for you now pursuing it when you go into the book of Daniel, and let's go there now. Even the historians know. Even the historians know. Right? It says right here in Daniel 2.36. This is the dream. And we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Right? So right here in the interpretation. Babylon the first kingdom. We're not in Babylon. It fell. Medo-Persia. Right? Was the second empire. Right? It fell. And Greece was the third. And it fell. Right? Then the fourth came into power of Rome. So pursuant to, to the scriptures, the way that they read, after the Roman Empire, the divine kingdom will come, which is the, the Savior. Which really, as a footnote, the Israelites are not supposed to even go back to the Holy Land until the Lord comes after the fall of the Fourth Empire. That's why you won't answer the question, because you're stuck. But we already answered it for you, because we know that you're a demon. Now pursuant to the, to the uh, you're a demon and you're inept in the scriptures, as you're Christian counterparts all of you because if you answer the question honestly you would have to admit that you're the Edomites which we already know it right here in the in the, in the uh, statue the figurine right coming from Daniel 2 which the brother asked you about you have the kingdoms chronicalized the head of gold was Babylon the chest and arms of silver were the Medes and the Persians right all both fell belly of thighs of and uh and of brass belly and thighs of brass kingdom of ancient greece they fell legs of iron was the kingdom of ancient rome 
right? Which it came into power, the Roman Empire, but then it fell. But then during the Renaissance, the rebirth, the Roman Empire came back into authority. See, and this is where you got the covering of the judges, the covering of the faces, you know, and the hiding of the of the uh, nationality of the Israelites, which we also gonna get a lesson doing going into that as well, Lord willing. So here it says feet of iron and uh, and clay, which currently we are right now, kingdom of restored Rome. This is currently where we are. When we go into the scriptures, let's go to Second Ezra now, chapter eleven. And this is from the Apocrypha. This is 2 second, second Ezra chapter 11. And I'm going to start at verse 36. Then I heard a voice which said unto me, Look before thee and consider the thing that thou seest right here. So there's, there's a vision being shown to Ezra. And behold, and lo, as it were a roaring lion chased out of the wood. And I saw that he sent out a man's voice unto the eagle. Now this roaring lion is a lion from the tribe of Judah. And this eagle is the Roman Empire. He says here in verse 38, Hear thou, I will talk with thee. And the highest shall say unto thee, Art not thou it that remainest of the four beasts? What four beasts? These four. Right, which here is the statue of gold, but there are also four beasts that Daniel saw. See? So you had the Babylonians, one. Kingdom of the Medes and Persians, two. Greece, three. Rome was four. It says here, Art not thou it that remainest of the four beasts whom I made to reign in my world, that the end of their times might come through them? So the four beasts would be the end of it. Now, as we said, the Roman Empire was, was uh, it went out of power for roughly a period of a thousand years, but then it came back into authority, you know, in the late 1400s, if I'm not mistaken on the date, you know, I'm a little, you know, rusty on the dates, but it but around the time of the renaissance or at the renaissance which means rebirth of the roman empire so here it says in verse four and the fourth which fourth what of the beasts and the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were passed and had power over the world with great fearfulness and over the whole compass of the earth with much wicked oppression and so long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit and this fourth right as the lord said it or right, now that it the remainest of the four beasts. So this is the remainder of the fourth part. The fourth beast being the Roman Empire. But now we're in the revised Roman Empire. Now this chat this chapter and verse 12 and chapter 12 also goes into that Roman Empire. See? So the Roman Empire was, was slated to be the last empire on the earth. Now, the curious thing about that is when you read in 2nd Ezra chapter 6 and verse 7, it says. I started at six. Then did I consider these things and they were all made through me alone and through none other. By me also they shall be ended and by none other. Then answered I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of the times? What's the parting asunder of the times? The end of the world. So this fourth in empire will end at the end of the world. The operative word world being aeon or age pursuant to Matthew 24 and verse three. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times, or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that follow? Let's also let's just go away from there. Real briefly here. Let's go and prove that. Right? We're gonna go to Matthew real quick. Matthew 24. And verse 3. It's right here. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be? And what should be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And that world is a, a is the aeon or current system of things. See, that's in Matthew 24, back in 2 Ezra, verse 7. Matthew, uh, I'm sorry, 2 Ezra 6 and verse 7. Then answered I and said, What should be the parting of sunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that follows? So the first earth age. It's chronicled by four major empires, which you already read about and, we, and we've been talking about. This is the first Earth Age right here. There were many other empires that ruled, but there were four major empires that would have ruled. And from and he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac unto Jacob and 
uh, Salakia. Let's go back to seven. Then answered I and said, what should be the parting asunder of the times, the end of the world? Or when shall be the end of the first, the first earth age, and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. Here's the money. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So, pursuant to everything that we read, the Roman Empire would be in authority and in the last days, which we say the earth is given to the hand of the wicked, and those same Romans were Edomites. It's Esau. All you so-called white people that rule all over the earth, America, Babylon, the Great, NATO, and the EU, you are all Edomites. And we got a video to back this up. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And you're going to see this same sentiment being echoed in the video that you're about to see to come. So stay tuned. Vocab Malone didn't want to answer the question because he's stuck. He's stuck and he knew it. And, he, and plus, he probably didn't even know the answer. You see, this dude is a slippery serpent and you got caught out there again. And we got more videos to come. Lord willing, as you've seen all the apostles, elders and brothers doing lessons on bits and pieces of, of this uh, exchange by the Virginia brothers and Vocab Malone. So Vocab, you didn't want to answer the question what heathen nation was ruling right currently. You see? Because you know that you're Edomites. Stay tuned, brothers and sisters, for the next part of the video. Shalom. But as many are finding out, Edomites, the descendants of Esau, actually made up the Roman Empire. As a matter of fact, the Jewish Encyclopedia also states that the name Edom is used by the Talmudists for the Roman Empire, and they applied to Rome every passage of the Bible referring to Edom or to Esau. Where is Edom today? Esau's land was called Edom. Edom is the country of Jordan and the place of Petra, the city in the mountain. Look at the architecture of the photo at Petra, which is Edom. Notice how it resembles Rome along with many of the structures all over the world. Our sports stadiums resemble the Colosseum. Even modern day sports are in fact derived from Rome. European systems of government are set up like the early Roman Empire, having both Senate and the Republic, local government and other things as well. Esau's descendants are called Edomites. Later, they're called Idumeans. Idumea or Edom in Hebrew was the region south of Judea, originally inhabited by the reputed descendants of Jacob's brother Esau. Edom was periodically subjected to Judea, under David and Solomon, the Maccabees, homeland of the House of Herod. There were no natural boundaries between Idumea and Judea, so the borders were always in flux. According to the Jewish Encyclopedia, 1925 edition, in 163 BC, Judas Maccabeus conquered the Edomite territory for a time. They, the Edomites, were again subdued by John Hyrcanus, about 125 BC, by whom they were forced to observe Israelite rites and laws of the Torah. They were then incorporated with the tribe of Judah, and their country was called by the Greeks and Romans, Idumea. With Antipater the Idumean began the Idumean dynasty that ruled over Judea till its conquest by the Romans. From this time, the Idumeans ceased to be a separate people. Therefore, Edom later became known as the Roman Empire. With the sacking of Rome by the barbarians came the mingling or spoiling of Esau's seed, thus fulfilling the prophecy of Jeremiah 49.10. But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not. The Goths were Ukraine, Romania, Moldova, Belarus, Poland, and Scandinavia. The Saxons were Germany, the Dutch, the English, Northern Albania, Great Britain, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales. The Franks were France. The Lombards were Italy. The Vandals were East Germany which were known for their senseless destruction, which is where we get the term Vandalism. Vandalism is the behavior attributed originally to the Vandals by the Romans in respect of culture, ruthless destruction or spoiling of anything beautiful or venerable. These kingdoms all branched off into other kingdoms such as Canada, America, Caucasus, Siberia, Central Asia, Sweden, Finland, Norway, Ireland, 
and maybe others. No, together these kingdoms all make up the rule of the entire world. Esau and his kingdoms, Edom, will be ruling at the end of the world, and Jacob will rule afterward in the millennium under the Messiah, Yeshua. Many Bible scholars teach that the Edomites no longer exist, but scripture clearly shows them in the last days. Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return, and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation for ever. Many people use this scripture to claim that Edom was exterminated, but this is not what the passage implies. It states very clearly that the Most High hated Esau and laid his mountains and heritage to waste. But in the next verse, it states, Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. At the time of Malachi's prophecy, Edom was a wasteland between 445 and 432 BC. How do we know this? The Most High said, I laid, past tense, his mountains and his heritage to waste. Edom's response was, we will return and build the desolate places. So if Edom was completely destroyed, how could they say that they'd return? And why would scripture give reference to Edom still being around in the last days? The Most High's response was, they shall build, but I will throw down. This is a future prophecy that Edom will return and rebuild but the Most High will destroy his kingdom in his final judgment against Edom in the last days. For Esau, Edom is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. 2nd Estras chapter 6 verse 9, the Apocrypha. The prophecy in Isaiah chapter 63 verses 1 through 6 confirms that this is indeed what will happen. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah, this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in mine anger, and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. Happen. When the Messiah returns, where does he go, and what does he do? He goes to every place where the descendants of Esau, the Edomites, have set up their kingdoms, and slaughters them for their perpetual violence against Jacob. He treads the winepress, and his wrath is accomplished. 